What is up guys? Patrick back with another video. My MGTOW brethren, put on your tinfoil hats because today we are going deep into the rabbit hole. That's right, today I'm going to talk about geoengineering and chemtrails and I'm going to provide you with proof and the history, a short history, of geoengineering so that you can look up these links in the information field and see for yourself the actual truth and the facts about weather modification as well as what you're seeing in the sky. So one of the things that I forgot to mention on my last video which was comparing Southeast Asia to America and Europe uh, I, I kicked myself for not mentioning this, but this is something I have found to be so significant. I'm, I literally marvel at this whenever I look at the sky here and I just think about all the people, all the millennials, all the younger generations of Americans and Europeans and even Australians who they do not know better. They do not know what the sky used to look like 30 years ago. I do. I'm 37. I grew up in the 80s. And I always had a fascination with the sky, with airplanes, uh, with aircraft. I was always staring at the sky, uh, probably because I'm a little bit autistic, but um, that's beside the point. Uh, but always looking at airplanes, just being infatuated, fascinated. You know, I was all I, I loved having uh, toy airplanes, toy fighter jets, and so I'd always look at the sky. And I have to tell you, the sky from the '80s and the sky uh, in modern day is completely different and so I'm gonna get into that so when I moved to Southeast Asia I started looking at the sky and one thing I one thing I noticed was I was like wow the sky is like it's like beautiful crystal blue you can see miles and miles and miles away and it's and and it reminded like took me back to my childhood of looking at the sky and the feeling I would get when I looked at the sky and this is not some you know hippy dippy uh, nostalgic you know um, this guy's high on drugs kind of observation. Uh, I'm not on drugs. Sometimes I wish I was. But what I noticed after several months of living in Southeast Asia was there are no chemtrails. You do not see planes flying and leaving behind these long lines of condensate in the sky. And if you ever pay attention in America, the planes usually go out in pairs of three or four and what they do is they create a grid in the sky. You will see a long uh, white trail in the sky of some type of some type of condensate, some type of liquid spray that then dissipates into a gas and then diffuses across the sky and often laid in some type of pattern or a grid. Uh, one time I was camping at Fort, no, not Fort Meade. I was stationed at Fort Meade. I was at Lake Meade. Uh, which is just east of Las Vegas where the Hoover Dam is. And uh, Lake Mead is, is, a, is a really cool spot to go swimming or boating. Um, also, I went camping there uh, in the summer. It was hot as hell. And so one day I'm, I'm camping and uh, it's in the afternoon. So I'm just trying to stay cool. So I'm like sitting under a, a, or to the side of a tree and uh, reading a book and you know my dog's with me and, I'm, and it's, a, it's a beautiful clear day aside from the fact that it's hotter than balls and so I look up at the sky and it's like wow what a beautiful day clear day and then I look down and I'm reading and so I read for like five ten minutes and then I look back up at the sky and I took a picture of this and I think I posted it on one of my Facebook pages um, but when I looked back up at the sky it was insane. It was like a tic-tac-toe grid of chemtrails, that white line of spray that some airplanes emanate, mainly over America, Europe, and Australia. See the map below for a reference and for proof. So, you know, chemtrails have been one of those things, a very controversial topic that not everybody believes in. Some people dish out a lot of mockery over and I have been studying chemtrails for a long time and it's one of those things chemtrails are a secret government program okay some people are read into it when I say read in I mean they have the security clearance for it um, although some pilots uh, who who take part in this activity 
they may not even know 100% what they're doing, what they're spraying. Um, they may have uh, a clearance to, to, to do you know, the spraying without knowing the entire purpose, or they might know just only what they've been briefed. The way the um, uh, security system works in, uh, in America and the military and the government is it's compartmentalized, meaning that you know, basically the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing, but the brain knows what both hands are doing. And they do it this way, so that way there are fewer leaks, there are fewer uh, lower level individuals in government that know everything who could then say defect to another government and sell secrets or attempt to do so. So it's compartmentalized for a reason. But chemtrails are very real and many people have exposed the agenda. Uh, many people have taken samples of, of what chemtrails are, aluminum, barium, other types of chemicals. Um, there have been conferences on this. So when I get to Southeast Asia and I look at the sky, I do not see these anymore. And you can look at the map below and you'll see the reference map for geoengineering and you'll see that Southeast Asia does not take part in chemtrail spraying. But North America, Australia, and Europe do. Uh, Russia does not. So this is the reason why I look at the sky here and it reminds me of when I was a kid in the 80s and I would look up at the sky and I would just see a crystal clear sky. So, you know, this is, this is not something you can just make up. This is something that, I mean, I still think about this on a weekly, if not daily basis when I look at the sky and I'm like, the sky here is amazing. You can see so far because they're not spraying chemtrails. Now notice in America, they, you could have a, a, a nice clear sky, a nice beautiful day, and then all of a sudden they spray and you see those line, long ass lines in the sky in the grid. And then what happens 30 minutes to two hours later, it dissipates, it makes the sky gray and artificially overcast. And it's probably blocking out a, a significant amount of sunlight Obviously, you can't see through the particulate matter that they spray. Um, and, so, and so then the question becomes, I guess, why they're doing this. Well, to me, you know, the fact that they're doing it is, is uh, irrefutable. You can't deny that they're doing it. And I've seen with my own eyes the difference now, the stark contrast between America's skies and Southeast Asia's skies. And then you look at the map provided below, and it pretty much confirms the fact. So why are they spraying it? So some people, so I've, I've heard interviews with people, um, I believe they were ex-military, and they said that part of the reason they spray chemtrails, aluminum and barium, is to fill the sky with uh, some type of uh, matter to make uh, military radar work better. So that way they have more things to reflect radar beams off of. Um, another another uh, theory is that they're spraying this particular matter in the atmosphere to block out uh, certain harmful UV rays or something like that because they they believe that climate change and global warming, you know, whatever they're calling it this week, uh, can be prevented, whether or not it's real, um, by spraying, uh, you know, tiny metals into the atmosphere. Some people think that chemtrails are even uh, more nefarious than that and that they're actually spraying people with some type of... Uh, immune system altering compound on purpose, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason. So it is undeniable that chemtrails are real. They do exist and they don't exist in Southeast Asia. Now, why in the heck, if, if chemtrails are only contrails, you know, the precipitate uh, matter that comes off of wings of airplanes, but then goes away within a minute, if they're the same, then why doesn't Southeast Asia have them? You know, there are certainly uh, a ton of international airports in this region. Some countries have some of the biggest airports in the world with a lot of flight volume. So you would see them here if chemtrails were just contrails uh, and they exist everywhere. So you can't you can't use that as an excuse. And, and I know that that's one of the big arguments. I'm telling you, I've seen with my own eyes the difference. Now let's get into some other forms of geoengineering to uh, further simply lay the historical groundwork for the concept of, of chemtrails and geoengineering. So in the 60s, 
Uh, the United States military actually performed a weather modification campaign in the Vietnam War known as Operation Popeye. And they did this uh, in an effort to cause mass flooding, uh, to uh, destroy crops in Vietnam, uh, as well as to uh, hamper the transport of military, um, of target military vehicles. So to uh, ruin essentially the landscape for the enemy um, and to uh, hurt their ability to conduct warfare. Uh, it was in 1978 that the United Nations then outlawed the use of weather modification for warfare purposes. Okay, so this is, again, this is in the link below. If you don't believe me, there's the proof. Now, another interesting thing um, is that there are countries with patents, patents on geoengineering and a thing called cloud seeding. So uh, the late king of Thailand started doing um, cloud seeding geoengineering from an airplane, uh, uh, releasing silver iodide into the atmosphere in an attempt to cause rain uh, for the sake of agriculture. And it was 30 years later, after the, um, when he began in the 60s, that, the, that Europe gave him a patent on what is known as the sandwich technique, nothing sexual, um, where you create a, uh, a layer of hot clouds and cold clouds to create the precipitation um, to create rain artificially, okay? Man-made rain, cloud seeding. And uh, the late king of Thailand was a pilot, and uh, he would fly all over uh, Thailand and visit all the farmers. And he was very involved um, in, in innovative ways of, uh, of doing things and discovering things to help his people. So, he, so the kingdom of Thailand has a patent on cloud seeding, which they have lent out to countries like Australia, as well as Jordan and the Middle East. And this is all, you can look all of this up. Okay, I'm providing the link below. And if you don't believe me, just Google in cloud seeding Thailand and you will, um, you'll have some very interesting things to learn. So there are, there are many other forms of geoengineering um, that exist, but my, but my big interest was in, in the sky. And, and from what I have seen with my own eyes and just, it's like a revelation because, you know, you get lied to so much by the government and by the media. You get called crazy by the average person on the street that, you know, you're probably way more educated than and way and have way more of a rational mind. But everyone just goes, yeah, whatever, conspiracy theorist, you conspiracy nut. But it's absolutely true. It's it's undisputable, irrefutable, um, and dubitable. I don't know. I think I made that last word up. Uh, or maybe I didn't. But so cloud seeding is real. Chemtrails are real. They exist heavily in North America, Europe, and Australia. They don't exist in Southeast Asia. Look up the map below if you don't believe me. And... You know, the next time somebody calls you a conspiracy nut, you know, just do what I do and um, just ignore it. So, you know, use your brain, use your mind, because the government and the media are going to keep lying to you about everything. And, the, and really the sad thing about all this is that you're going to hear me harp on this in lots of my videos. This is a fact, okay? Most Americans, six out of ten Americans, do not have $500 saved up in their bank account. So consider the ignorance, the mass ignorance um, of many people in America because they cannot travel outside of the country. They cannot afford to buy a, a ticket to Asia and go travel for, you know, a couple of weeks. Maybe they work a part-time job. Maybe they work two or three part-time jobs because according to the University of Princeton, in the last eight years under Barack Obama, 92% of the jobs created or part-time or contract work. And then you have the mainstream lying Zionist media telling you, oh, hey, people are enjoying not working so much anymore. People are choosing, rather, to spend their time, uh, and they make up some BS excuse, 
People are choosing to work as freelancers. No, you work as a freelancer and a contractor um, in addition to having a full-time job, but that's not what's going on. Uh, and they're calling part-time workers freelancers. Oh, you mean people who are unemployed and who take occasional gigs because they're taking what work they can get? So the, so the University of Princeton has proven that 92% of the jobs created were part-time or contract work. This is why retail in America is crashing right now. This is why people can't afford to buy a new house, all right? And housing sales are dropping like flies, okay? This is why the media lies to you and tells you, oh, millennials aren't buying homes the way pri uh, prior generations were. Uh, this is because millennials don't value things like homes. They'd rather have experiences. Like people who bought homes in the past didn't also like to have experiences. They probably had more experiences because they had money and they could buy a home and take vacations. Most Americans can't even take a vacation anymore. So how in the heck is somebody supposed to see with their own eyes the way I have the fact that the sky and the weather in America is constantly manipulated and fucked with by secret government programs, which are not so secret anymore. It's out in the open. Well, this is food for thought for you, and uh, I wish you the best. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you don't believe me, click the link below. Learn something, all right? Don't just take my word for it, or do. You know, I have no reason to lie to you. This is, uh, this is stuff that I found to be very interesting, and it's just so nice. It's so wonderful to be able to look up at the sky, even on a naturally cloudy day here, and to see for miles, and to see just how clear the sky, it's, it's crystal clear, it's beautiful. It's like when you go uh, and you look at, 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 at clear blue water uh, in a lake or at the ocean, you know, um, assuming you're not in Galveston, Texas, right, or, or South Carolina. <laughs> you know, let's say you're in Cancun, right? And you look at the water and it's beautiful, okay? That's what looking at the sky is like out here. And it's just, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It really, it's like looking at the sky, at the stars on a clear night. And you see and you feel at some type of uh, physical, maybe even supernatural level, you sense that space, you know? And it makes you feel like, aligned. It makes you feel small, but at the same time, deeply connected uh, to the environment, to, to where you are and to, um, and to the things around you. So uh, I wish you the best. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.